Hi guys, it's Steph. Welcome back to the cantina. Um, I'm going to be in here for a little while because, well, let's see, maybe I can go out in the kitchen and just sit. Uh, I've got to do um, uh, my podcast in a little bit with uh, Didi Sorvino. Uh, so this is going to be very short, but I figured what the hell. Um, as you know, yesterday, uh, Star Wars Theory um, put a, a his editor found a clip of Leslie Headland basically attacking George Lucas. And, you know, understandably, it made him mad. And uh, let me look this back up because I need to put the power on. Um, it made him mad. Uh, it, it infuriated me. And he asked the question, why do they hire people like this? My response is um they hire people like that hey man piranha because uh kathleen kennedy feels the same way look what is done in what what does all right that great line from uh tom wilkinson is laura cornwallis and the patriot you serve me and the manner with in which you serve me reflects upon me so Leslie Edlin going up and saying, you know, George Lucas doesn't know anything about Star Wars. He's not the only one um, saying that, implying that he didn't have the vision to hire Ralph McQuarrie. Uh, Leslie, wait a second. He hired Ralph McQuarrie. D look, K Kennedy went out and hired people who are not Star Wars fans, who don't know anything about it, okay? And they're proud of it. They're proud of, of not knowing anything about it. Secondly, you know, she talks about misogyny in Star Wars before Kennedy. It's like, what are you talking about? Why are you sticking your... Fucked up politics, if Star Wars theory is here, sorry, I'm, I'm dumping uh, F-bombs, but I hate this woman so much. She, I, she makes me feel out of control. That's how much I hate her. Um, she, she gets a really bad reaction from me, but women like her in general always do. Anyway, um, I don't, you know, it's like, look, I just want to watch Star Wars and, and have fun. I don't want your politics in it. Why are you bringing this up? Why are you bringing up representation in the 1970s? You know, look, even reading, Burn, or uh, listening to Burn It Down, the book by um, Maureen Ryan, it's like, I am so bloody sick and tired of the word representation and the crying, the whining, and the ranting and raving from woke white women who have no fucking idea what they're fucking talking about. Pardon me. I can't stand it. Okay, first off, if you, I did a video that got a lot of watch time about Headland, and it was a, an, uh, a panel discussion in which she's pandering to these black women on the stage with her. And basically um, being a racist herself. And and now, you know, this this new uh, bit of, of stuff from uh, a podcast in which she's attacking George Lucas. You know, first off, no history. Again, let me go and remember, she didn't realize, doesn't know, that George Lucas hired Ralph McQuarrie to, I mean, he saw McQuarrie's uh, uh, art, uh, his concept art in another friend's home in Los Angeles, got a hold of him, asked him if he could do some for him. McQuarrie did. Ta-da! Okay. Um, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Okay, that's what, that's what happened. Okay. Then we've got her mis misandrist attack on George. And I, what is mythological or tour? The or, or, or a tour mythology. Hi, Peter. 
I don't know what that is. Do you guys know what that is? I, you know, Larry asked, I'm asking. I'm sure God on his throne in heaven is sitting there uh, looking at the angels and the saints going, what is that? Um, you know, it, did, it doesn't make any sense. This woman is a cartoon. Okay, let's just go over what we found out this week. The Shell Corporation uh, Blue Stocking uh, has not met its obligations to pay for its, I, I think, licenses to keep its license to be a corporation uh, to the company house, which is a royal UK government agency. And July 23rd, if they do not come up with the money, you guys saw the notice of Gazette that the license is nothing. I mean, they're, they're, look, they're, they're hundreds of pounds, basically. Um, they're not expensive at all. So this is not good. Okay. And again, WDW Pro is going, there's, it's still going to, uh, show up on Disney Plus on, on, you in, in 2024. It is. All right, let's say 23rd shows up, the crown seizes all the assets, film and everything, everything. Okay, the computer's everything. Um, we go to trial, we go to discovery, and uh, that stuff becomes available in discovery. What are they gonna do? What is Hedlund gonna do when it's discovered that she absolutely filmed nothing more than a sizzle reel? Okay, you know, kind of shoots down the black pill blobs, you know, the three hyenas. Uh, Damn it, we have the quarter on all contacts with Lucasfilm. And I'm a thousand percent sure that George Lucas is never buying it back. And the acolyte is going to appear on, in, the, on, in 2024. Her! And his contact is Pablo Hidalgo. Okay. And anybody who is actually a current uh, writer, producer in um, Hollywood right now, uh, who's been interviewed by several different newspapers, uh, clearly doesn't have any contacts, right? All right, yeah, okay, so there's my, there's my pointed comments on WDW Pro. Uh, if you watch him, just remember that there's dumbassery and then there's fuckery and that is fuckery okay anyway um i i have to say uh again go go and watch the headland video go and watch it um the, the again the fact that they have not kept up payments to the british crown the fact of the matter is we have not seen even a sizzle reel of this they're getting sued for breach of of for egregious firing by a prominent well-respected producer and there she is attacking you know in 2019 of course george lucas and if if if, if look if it's so bad that star wars theory himself has to make a video and and call her out then there you go Okay, I'm like, look, I'm a woman, I can call her out and I can say anything I want. This is my territory. You boys let me take care of that, okay? You know, she's a cart, like I said, she's a cartoon. She's insecure, she's jealous of George. Um, she uh, cannot see beyond her own uh, bullshit when, in, when, when it comes to uh, the things that she likes and, and fucking, you know, misogyny and misandry and, you know, she talks about representation like it matters. Like, like, representation makes the story. When George Lucas would say the story matters. This is why he gets, he would get mad at people. No, she can't. If they make it available, um, I, I honestly, if they seize it, it's over. 
and the con is, is set. And if Bob Iger and Disney put the kibosh on any money being spent on that license, that there, this is, look, to me, this looks like Kennedy and Hedlund were set up to fail miserably. Now, I'm going to get into, uh, uh, get, what else are I going to talk about? I was, whatever. Um, is George buying uh, Lucasfilm back? I don't know. Um, it would be uh, the best scenario. The fact of the matter is, and this is just, uh, look, hearsay evidence is not allowed in courts. Okay, so I'm just going to put that out there. This is hearsay evidence. But what's not hearsay evidence is that uh, Disney Legal and Bob Iger are talking about what would a sale of Lucasfilm look like? And when they talk about the buyer, it sounds in, in Sparrow's mind, a single person. And the only one that makes any sense at all is George Lucas. Now, again, again, it could be Elon Musk, which I would, I would be, look, if it was George, I'd break down sobbing tears of joy. If it was Elon Musk, I'd be rolling on the floor laughing watching the fucking meltdown occur. Um, you know, it could be a studio. Um, you know, I don't know. It, it might not go through. Okay, but they are talking about selling Lucasfilm. Okay, that, why wouldn't they? Now, yesterday uh, in Doom Cox chat, I had a little man trying to uh, mansplain to me that it wouldn't cover up the hole in Disney's financials. No shit, Sherlock, you think? Okay, I know that, but it would take a headache away from Disney, which is Kathleen Kennedy, and it would allow whoever buys it, and if it's George, to get rid of all the shit. And it's it's not Disney anymore, uh, uh, Jay. Um, you know, I, I'm going to use the analogy of Joseph Stalin. In 1941, uh, the Russians attacked, or the, the Germans attacked Russia. They invaded Russia. Uh, by the time we got into Pearl Harbor, we realized that we had a choice between two assholes. On the 8th of November, or December, Germany declared war on America, which is fucking stupid on their part, but, you know, I mean, let's put it this way. The German brain, brain trust at the time wasn't exactly full of Einsteins, okay? And we had a choice, the, the asshole on the left or the asshole further left, okay? And we took the asshole further left, okay? Now, in the great scheme of things, it probably would have been better for the free world in the West if Germany and Russia bled each other away. Okay, think about it. No Nazis, no Marxists, your champagne breaks out everywhere, okay? Um, but, you know, we, we were stuck. And there were factors going into this. We knew the Germans had a, had a, a, a head start with the nuclear bomb even back then, okay? We were already experimenting. Um, they had a head start with uh, uh, um, rocketry, okay? I mean, our, our rocket program in the, in the 50s and 60s, those are German scientists that we brought over with Operation Paperclip, okay? Um, and, you know, a lot of people like to denigrate that, and it's like, look, what a good idea. Let's let the Russians have all of them. What a great idea, said no smart person ever, okay? Um, because no matter what, anybody with a brain from General Marshall down knew eventually we were going to be looking, casting the hairy eyeball at Stalin, who made absolutely loud and known he wanted to take down capitalism, which meant the United States, okay? So... It's a choice between asshole number one 
and asshole number two. Well, guess what? Asshole number two is an asshole, but he's our asshole for the time being. Okay. Bob Iger is our asshole right now. Okay. And I, I, I have a theory, and it may come out someday, that he has wanted to see Kennedy out for a long fucking time. You know, and that's, and that's the truth. Okay. And that, and that's, you know, I see a lot of new people here. Uh, I want to welcome Mando VR. Um, you know, guys, they can't do it because they don't know how to do it. Okay. They're activists. I've talked about this many, many times. Activists are not creatives. They're not. Okay. I've had people who hate George Lucas um, who call themselves Star Wars fans, but still living under the delusion that he ruined my childhood. You know, you have a lot of problems if you think that, okay, we need to talk. Maybe you should call Fraser, K Fraser Crane. Okay. Um, George never put anything... Um, that was contemporary, anti-Republican, anti-Reagan, etc. into The Empire Strikes Back, into Return of the Jedi. Um, a lot of people read into, into uh, the Battle of Endor and the Ewoks of Vietnam. Not that easy. Um, I would have been more, uh, that would have been more appropriate had it been Kashyyyk, they were trying to free. Okay, with the Wookiees. But uh, it, it wasn't. Um, so, you know, that's a simplistic view. Uh, but George was not an activist. I mean, you're not going to see Vice Admiral Gender Studies show up on Endor. Purple hair and everything. Okay. You're not going to see Rose Tico screaming Marxist Maoist doctrine in, during the middle of the, 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 the Battle of Hoth, okay? You're not. It, it, that wasn't what it was about. Um, th there you go. And if you watch the prequels and the Clone Wars and then the OT, you know, and Jaina's right. J and, and Jaina's right there. And Anyway, guys, I got to go because I've got 10 minutes to get this kitchen policed up and ready to rock and roll for um, Dee Dee's podcast. Uh, I do it every Thursday, Dee Dee, uh, Drinks with Dee Dee, it's an hour. Um, and if you go onto Spotify, uh, let's see, any of the podcasting systems uh, that are out there, uh, they post them on Fridays. So tomorrow, you know, you're gonna see me drunk off my ass and we're gonna be laughing about something. Anyway, this is Steph. Signing out, I'll see you around the, the galaxy.